All right, welcome back to the linked list series here on YouTube by Max Codes, and welcome back to the dev channel. In this video, we're going to start building out the linked list that we talked about in the previous episode here in this series. If you want a brief overview of what a linked list is and kind of a refresher if you've already built one out previously, then go ahead and check out the last video I uploaded. I'll put the link in the description to the last and the next video, and I'll be doing that throughout this series so that you can easily navigate between videos. Now, in that last video, we kind of just go over what a linked list is, how nodes connect, what the previous and next node pointers are, and the head and tail, why they're nil, their next and previous nodes, and we're going to be building it out now. Let's go ahead and jump into that. Again, if you want that brief overview, go ahead and check out that last video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into this video where we're going to be creating a node class, creating a linked list class, and providing a last and next node pointer in that linked list class. Once we're done with this video where we complete steps one through three, we will jump into the next video where we're going to be creating the ability to append nodes to our linked list. And we're going to be talking quite a bit about pointers in that video. So let's go ahead and jump into the code by first going over to Xcode. And if you've been watching my Swift UI videos, you'll notice that I use the Xcode, I use the Xcode 11 beta quite a bit. Now in this series, I'm just going to be using the latest version of Xcode. Now, if it's 10 months from now or whenever the next version of Xcode is going to be publicly released, it doesn't matter which version of Xcode you do this on. The Swift language shouldn't change too much when it comes to generics and what we're going to be doing. So go ahead and just open up whatever version of Xcode you want. Again, I'm going to be using the current version of Xcode. And what we're going to want to do is create a new Swift playground. Okay, now how do we do this? Well, you can either go up to the file menu in Xcode and hit new and then playground, or you can just use the shortcut, which is command option shift N. Okay, that should open up a new page, which will give you that playground selection. Let me boot that up one more time. Looks like I didn't hit all the option keys. And uh, yeah, this is what you're given. Again, that shortcut is command option shift N. N. You just want to hold those four keys down and it will give you this. I'm going to go ahead and choose a blank playground app and then I'm just going to call this linked list. Okay. Now I'm not sure where it's saving it. I'm just going to put it inside of my documents and I'm going to hit create. Okay. So once you have that, what we're going to do is jump right into the code where we're going to hit this play button and you'll see that it says hello playground on the right of our screen. Okay, so if you can't get playgrounds to work for whatever reason, I've known them to be buggy in the past, then you can always just follow along or you can create a single view app and kind of do it in there. But I'm going to be using playgrounds throughout this series. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this string. And what the first step is, is to create a node for our linked list. So each one of these is a node. I'm going to minimize this a bit so you can still see it just because it looks nice. And then what we'll do is we will flip back over here and I'm going to expand this a bit so that we can look at some of the diagrams here in my article that I wrote. Okay. So you'll see we have nodes here. Okay. Now the head and the tail we'll deal with later in this video, but for now we just kind of need to create a generic class called a linked list node where we can kind of define what this is in code. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is say public class and I'm going to call it LL node. Okay. And then I'm going to put a bracket like that and a T within there. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see it better. And then I'm going to open it up like that and I'll say var value is of type T. Now you might be wondering what are these T's and why don't we just call it node? Okay. Now a T, a T is a type. Okay. It's any type. If you hit show quick help, Looks like there's no documentation on that right there. But what we can do is we can just go over to Chrome here and Google Swift generics. So if you go to Google and you, let's see, you Google Swift generics and you click on this first link, you're going to see a little description of what generics are. Now, if you've never done generics, well, you're about to learn a little bit about it. 
Okay, so generic code enables you to write flexible, reusable functions and types that can work with any type. Okay, subject to requirements that you define. So it's gonna require that we write a little bit more code, but it allows us to have more flexibility, okay? It's subject to our requirements, we make the rules now, right? Okay, so you can write code that avoids duplication and expresses its intent in a clear, abstracted manner. Now, what is the purpose of generics in a linked list? Well, it's that we can create a linked list that doesn't take in one type, say a string or an integer, we're making it so that it can take in any type, and that's the exact purpose of generics. Okay, so don't worry too much about what generics are if you're absolutely confused. Go ahead and search my channel for generics, see if I have a video on that if you want to learn more about it. But let's take a dip from generics and let's jump back into the code, okay? All right, so now you might be wondering why are we calling it LL node and not just node? Well, we'll get to that in just a second when we create the actual linked list class and a type alias, and you'll see just why we want to do that. Okay, so we have our value, and this value is just gonna contain the value for each one of our nodes. So say we have a linked list of strings. What this means is that we're gonna have a bunch of values in, say, an array kind of format, right? We're gonna say ASDF. Let's say we have a website in here. Let's say we have another website maybe with a dope page on it. And essentially each one of these has a value, right? And then they have their next and previous connectors, right? So then the last one, let me pull up the diagram here. You'll see the last one is nil, right? But then the next one is gonna be connected to that node. And ASDF is connected to this node, but the previous one is connected to nothing, which is why it's nil, okay? and then so on, right? And then the last one has a value of nil. This has a value of nil, the next one, because there's no node it connects to. But again, the previous one kind of connects to that maxcodes.io reference. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense and hopefully you understand why we need a value. Let's go ahead now and put in a var next, and this is gonna be of type LL node because we need to connect to that next node, right? So that little arrow is a connector to that next node. You can think of next as that arrow right there or that arrow too. Okay, so that's our next node. And then now we need a previous. Let's say var previous, and we might come back in here and mark that as weak, but we're not gonna talk about that in this video. You'll see we have our previous one. Hopefully that makes sense. And then finally, we just need an initializer. So we'll say value type is T <clears throat> and self.value, let's see. Self.value is equal to value. <clears throat> All right, so that's our LL node or linked list node class. Now, before we jump into the next video, what we're gonna do is we're going to build out a basic version of our linked list class without any functions, okay? Just a couple values. Okay, so let's reference our article here and see just exactly what we need to do. Create a linked list class and provide the last and next nodes. Okay, so the head and the tail. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip over to our code here and we're gonna define our linked list. We can do this by saying public class linked list is of type T, and then we will provide it a head. So we'll say private var head, and this is gonna be of type node. Now, what did I just do here? I didn't use LL node, okay? And this is why we need to use the LL, because if I say LL node like this, it's gonna give us a little error and it's gonna want us to add a little bit more code, right? Now, we don't want to type out all that code every time, the LL node any with the question mark and everything, right? We just wanna say like node with a question mark. How can we do this? Well, type alias. We can say public type alias node is equal to LL node with a type of T. And then now all we have to do is just say, instead of all that, all we have to do is say node. Okay, so that's why we call this LL node. Cause you'll see if I just call it node, it's gonna give us a little error because it's saying, hey, why are you trying to redefine node? Okay, because node already has a value and it's this class. All right, so what we do is we call it LL node. And what this allows us to do is avoid saying any each time we define a value of node. Okay, so that's our head. Now we just need to provide the, the tail, okay? How do we do this? Or the first. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say public var first 
node and we're just going to return the head. So if we want to get the first element out of our array, we're just going to say first and it's going to return the head. Okay. So how do we get the last node? Well, all we have to do is say public var last and we'll say this is a type of node. And what we want to do is we first want to check if there even are nodes in our list. And how do we do that? Well, we still we need to just check if head has a value because if head doesn't have a value, then there's no items in our list, which means there's no way we can even have a last node. Okay. So what I'm saying is if this head doesn't exist, then how can our tail exist if we don't even have a head? Okay. None of these will exist if we don't even have a head because the head is the first element in our array. So the first step in getting our last node is checking if node, checking if head even exists. So we'll say guard let or guard var node is equal to head. And then we'll say else return nil. So if there is no head, then we'll return nil because there's no last value if there is no head. So we'll just return nothing. Okay, now why did I make this a variable and call it node instead of something like head? And well, the reason we're doing that is because we can override it now if there happens to be more elements. Because just because there's a head in the list doesn't mean it is the last node, right? If there are no nodes after it, then yeah, that's the head and the tail, but maybe there's a whole list we need to kind of recurse over or iterate over or traverse down to get to the tail, like in the case of this four item linked list. And that's exactly what we kind of want to handle after we've checked this, because this is only one case. So the next case is to kind of traverse down the list and find that last node. So what we can do is say while let next is equal to node.next, node is equal to next. And then what we'll do is we'll simply return the node. Now, let me explain this because this probably doesn't make a whole bunch of sense. And essentially what's going on here is if we have a head, like we do in this image, we have four elements here, then we're not going to return nil. But then let's go ahead and check if there's any nodes at the end so we can get to the tail. If node.next, so if head does not, if head has a next, then we're simply going to set this next node to this node. So we're going to say, okay, node is now this. So this node is now equal to this node. And then we're going to do that again because it's a while loop. We're going to say, okay, well, does its next value have a value? And now that's next. This one is now next. If it does, then we want to set this now equal to that node. And then we'll do it again. We'll say, okay, well, what's its next node? And it's going to be this node. We still don't know it's the tail, right? But we know it has a value. So we'll say, okay, we'll set node equal to that node. And then we're going to hit this loop again and we're going to say, okay, well, does that node have a next? And it will fail because it's nil because there's no node that comes after it. So it's going to say, nope, there's not. So don't run that. Break the loop and let's return the node. We've successfully now returned the tail. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, just keep rewatching this video. And what I actually advise you do right now is follow along and let's actually define an instance of our linked list and kind of play around with the values. So the goal here is to create a four value linked list. Okay. And we'll put some custom strings in here for these values. What we're going to do is say, let linked list is equal to a new list, right? So we'll say let list is equal to linked list. And we'll make it of type string. Okay. Now, again, this is generics. Since it has a type, we need to pass that in. And that type is going to be a string. If we wanted to, we could put in numbers. Okay. That's what generic solves for us. We don't need to duplicate all this code just to make a linked list for strings and integers. We can just use generics and pass in the value we want. So what you could do is even pass in your own custom struct like hello, right? And then it has some data or let's say var uh, Boolean or something, right? Like it just has some values. Okay. And then we can pass in and say, Hey, this linked list has a bunch of types of hello. All right. So link or uh, generics are pretty versatile and pretty helpful. Okay. Let's make it string. And then what we'll do is we'll say list.first. And since there is no value for head, it's going to return nil. Okay. So it's going to return head, but since it's optional, there's not really going to be a value to that. So let's go ahead and compile that. I'm going to hit the play button here and it should just return nil or something around there. 
it's taken a second. Okay, you see it says no. Okay, but I don't really wanna focus on that. Let's say list dot last. And that's also gonna return nil because it doesn't have a value, right? Head doesn't have a value, which means it's gonna return nil. But what happens when we add data to it and then call it? We can say list dot, and you'll see we can't add data because we don't have an append, an append function, which is exactly what we're gonna solve in the very next video. So that's it for this video. I hope that was a good introduction to linked lists for you. I hope you learned a little bit about this and I hope you're ready to learn more about linked lists and how to actually append data to our linked list. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna append nodes to our list. And we're gonna talk about how to write the code to do that. I'll see you in just a second.